the number of atoms of each element present in the molecule is indicated by the number on its lower right hand corner as subscript. Here are the formulae of some of the molecules of elements that are generally used in the laboratory. An atom or a group of atoms can exist independently with charges. These are formed by loss or gain of electrons and are called radicals or more commonly as ions. Let us see this example. Here sodium atom on losing an electron becomes sodium ion. Magnesium atom on losing two electrons becomes magnesium ion. These are called radicals that are formed by the loss of one or more electrons. This type of radicals are described as electropositive and are called basic radicals or cations. Radicals are also formed by gaining of electrons. These are described as electronegative and are called acidic radicals or anions. For example, chlorine atom on gaining an electron becomes chloride radical or ion. Oxygen atom on gaining two electrons becomes oxide radical or ion. Here are a few examples of a group of atoms of different elements bearing positive or negative charges. The number of charges indicate the number of electrons lost or gained by the atom or a group of atoms. Depending on the number of charges like 1, 2, 3 or 4, the ions or radicals are described as monovalent, divalent, trivalent or tetravalent respectively. Here is the list of monovalent radicals. Now let's take a look at the list of divalent radicals. Now let's take a look at the trivalent radicals. Now Take a look at the list of tetravalent radicals as well. Let us see how to write a chemical formula using the crisscross method. When a substance is formed from two oppositely charged radicals, the formula of the molecule is written with the help of valencies of the radicals. First, write the radicals with their valencies and then crisscross the valencies. For example, let us write the formula of calcium chloride. First, determine the oxidation numbers for the two elements. As calcium is in group 2, its oxidation number is 2. Elements in group 2 tend to lose the two electrons in the outer energy level, leaving the ions with positive charges. Chloride is in group 17, so its oxidation number is minus 1. Elements in group 17 have 7 electrons in the outer energy level and tend to gain 1 electron. The ions are negative. Now crisscross the numbers, writing the oxidation numbers of one element as the subscript for the other. Reduce the subscripts to their simplest form by dividing by a common denominator. The formula for calcium chloride is CaCl2. Let us see another example, formula of sodium chloride. The valency of sodium is 1. And the valency of chloride is also 1. If the numbers are crisscrossed, we get the formula of sodium chloride. Let us write the formula of sodium carbonate. 
the valency of sodium is 1 and the valency of carbonate is 2. When the numbers are crisscrossed, we get the formula of sodium carbonate as Na2CO3. For aluminium chloride, the valency of aluminium is 3 and chloride is 1. When the numbers are crisscrossed, we get the formula of aluminium chloride as AlCl3. Let us see some examples of some compounds with their empirical formula and molecular formula. Here, least possible ratio of atoms in a molecule enables writing down the empirical formula whereas the molecular formula represents the ratio of atoms actually present in the molecule. In many cases, the empirical and molecular formulae of a compound are the same. But in many other cases, this is not true. For example, the molecular formula of benzene is C6H6, but its empirical formula is CH. Similarly, the molecular formula of acetylene is C2H2, but its empirical formula is same as that of benzene that is CH. In many cases the least possible ratio of the valencies of the radicals is written. For example the formula of calcium sulphate the valency of calcium is 2 and the valency of sulphate is 2. The formula of calcium sulphate is Ca2SO4 twice when the subscripts are divided by the common denominator, that is by 2, Ca2SO4 twice becomes CaSO4. Let us see another example, the formula of magnesium oxide. Can you tell me why a formula is important? Well, a formula helps us in calculating the molecular weights of the compounds from the atomic weights of the elements. For example, the formula of carbon dioxide is CO2. It contains one atom of carbon and two atoms of oxygen. The atomic weight of carbon is 12 and the atomic weight of oxygen is 16. Therefore, the molecular weight of carbon dioxide is 1 into 12 plus 2 into 16 which is equal to 44. Let us see one more example. The formula of silicon dioxide is SiO2. It contains one atom of silicon and two atoms of oxygen. Atomic weight of silicon is 28 and oxygen is 16. Therefore, the molecular weight of silicon dioxide is 1 into 28 plus 2 into 16 which is equal to 60. In general, compounds may be formed directly from constituent elements. For example, two atoms of sodium combined with one atom of oxygen to give rise to sodium oxide. For representation of such compounds, we define valency of the elements. Valency is defined as the combining capacity of the element. Criss-cross method can be employed in these cases also. Let us see these examples. Formula of silicon dioxide is SiO2. Formula of carbon dioxide is CO2. By these formulae, we can know the number of atoms of each element present in the molecule. For example, NaCl that is sodium chloride contains one atom of sodium and one atom of chlorine. CaCl2 that is calcium chloride contains one atom of calcium and two atoms of chlorine. NH4Cl that is ammonium chloride contains one atom of nitrogen, four atoms of hydrogen and one atom of chlorine. So far, we have learnt that elements are represented by the symbols 
and molecules are represented by formulae. In the same way, chemical reactions are also represented by using the formula of substances involved in a reaction. This is known as a chemical reaction. Let us see this example. The reaction between carbon and oxygen gives carbon dioxide. In this equation, the positive sign represents reaction and the arrow mark is read as gives rise to and gives the direction of the reaction in which the reaction occurs. The substances which react are called reactants which are given on the left side of the chemical equation. Substances which are formed are called products and are given on the right side of the equation. Let us see a few chemical reactions and their corresponding equations. When zinc reacts with oxygen, it gives rise to zinc oxide. When nitrogen reacts with oxygen, it gives rise to nitric oxide. When hydrogen reacts with iodine, it gives rise to hydrogen iodide. When hydrogen reacts with oxygen, it gives rise to H2O that is water. When nitrogen reacts with hydrogen, it gives rise to ammonia. An important point to understand here is that in a chemical reaction, mass is neither created nor destroyed. This is known as law of conservation of mass. This implies that the number of atoms of each element in the reactant side must be equal to the number of atoms of each element on the product side. This is known as balancing of chemical equation. To balance the chemical equation, write the chemical equation in words that shows the reactants and the products of a chemical reaction. Write a chemical equation using symbols and formula. For example, the molecules of elements like hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine and iodine are diatomic that is they consist of two atoms each. To balance an equation change the coefficients of molecules of the reactants or the products. The number of atoms in the molecules or compounds should remain the same. Write an upward arrow besides the formula if the substance is a gas and downward arrow besides the formula if it is a precipitate. Balancing equations are fun. Let's try some more. Write this equation in words. Barium chloride reacts with sulfuric acid that gives rise to barium sulfate and hydrochloric acid. Write the unbalanced equation using the symbols and formulae. Now balance the chemical equation. Write a downward arrow beside barium sulfate to indicate it is a precipitate. Why don't we look at some more examples on the method of writing a balanced chemical equation. Here we notice that while balancing an equation, the chemical formulae of reactions and products must be kept unchanged. Only the number of molecules of the reactants and products are changed in such a way that the total number of atoms of different elements on both sides are equal. Write this equation in words. Zinc reacts with hydrochloric acid to give zinc chloride and hydrogen. Write the unbalanced chemical equation using symbols and formulae. Now let us balance the chemical equation. Write an upward arrow beside hydrogen to indicate it as a gas. Let us see another example on balanced equations. Write this equation in words. Hydrogen reacts with oxygen at a very high temperature to give rise to water. Write the unbalanced equation using the symbols and formulae. Now balance the chemical equation. Write an upward arrow beside hydrogen and also beside oxygen to indicate that both hydrogen and oxygen are gases. Music